kind of spread out if you need to avoid a minecart. Yeah, Steve can camp on this stage, but he can do that anywhere because he just puts up a wall so the stage distance doesn't really affect that. It's more so if you can get away from him or not. So I want to see what the buzz does. He opts to immediately throw, keeping his yellow. Um, he's been really trying to push for a very specific style of managing his Pikmin, opting to get the red and the blue out of there early on just because they don't provide much for him in terms of his game plan. Um, you know, their last damage is neutral. He doesn't plan on grabbing that much. He doesn't want to get up close and personal. Red's not doing much either. When you can get a purple, the same thing. Ops, they keep the yellow, though. It's just fantastic for combos. Really good for out uh, spacing people, zoning them out with those aerials and things like that. So that's why you see him get that. And then he gets his white and purple early on, and he can start pressuring with a better, uh, stronger lineup, really. I like that Nair out of there. It's like, in a, in a spot like this, like, it's fine to just get that latch damage, because what... The goal is to get Steve to either overcommit or you to catch him slipping with something. And then you get a hit like that, and then you just want the damage. Because if you get too greedy, you see. And I really like what the buzz does right here. Where he knocks him out. <coughs> and he stays an entire roll distance away. Like, if he's a roll from the ledge, he can cover it. And this lets him run in and out. He has, like, a little back and forth. And he's still not hard committing. Um, and that's good, because that lets him, com like, react, essentially or read the minecart and then catch up the back air. Good spacing. No redstone there, definitely helping because the minecart's not going to be as powerful or as fast. All right, and then he goes back to kind of using those fares as like a, hey, I'm still right here. Don't camp me. And I like that a lot as well. Gets the back air, rolls out of this. Actually really smart. Like he's taking his hits and he goes like, okay, I don't need to stand here longer than I need to. And he just ends up fucking Yanni up. And now he goes into a second stock with the arguably best lineup you could have for low percent because you're going to get um, just a lot of damage from that, that white on top of the purples as well. Because two purples is what you want. I like the way Pikmin Dash there, actually. It's 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 unfortunate because it wasn't the safest, but because it was a tipper, that tipper in there only pushed him out, and he wasn't really able to get anything super massive off of it. So it was to get out of there. And he lands a shield break. That's not going to kill Yanni, though. Um, it shouldn't? Never mind. I'm, I'm bad. Steve's slight as fuck. Uh, and now he's just shitting on him. I like to stay grounded, let him commit for you. He, he's he got to play your game, right? A bit of an unfortunate minecart right there. And this is where, if you're not good on your timing, he goes, ah, oh, no, that doesn't work. You get hit. I, I'm not sure if that was a spacing issue or not, because it looked like the, the bear was a little bit far away. But I know that move does also have invincibility frames 1 through 17. So that's, that is what that could have been as well. Yanni opts to go do it. I really like fair for... Um, its ability to just break those blocks. Like, you can jab, you can down tilt, but fair is nice. It cleaves, so it'll hit multiple ones, and on weak blocks like that, you can get them pretty quick. Style on people, and I still feel miserable. Yeah, don't play Wi-Fi if you're not enjoying it. I mean, it's helpful, but, like, don't force yourself to do something you're not, you know, vibing with. Good Nair. Uh, given where he was at, I don't blame him for Nairing there. See, what he's doing right here, I don't think he should have attacked there. So, like, he, he gets back on. He should not have... That might have been an action all upbeat, or he might have meant to wing Pikmin dash. Either way, I don't like that. He could pluck, start getting his lineup going, and then regain his footing instead of fighting his way out of this advantage. Like, he only has the one Pikmin. He doesn't need to press that any more than he already is. Like, now he's back to the more neutral-oriented, throwing, intercepting, and that's what you want. But you got to be careful when you're approaching like that, because it's really easy to let that spiral. I mean, he's got three stocks to one, so it's not the most important thing, but it's something to be mindful of. The buzz looked a little shocked on his webcam. He couldn't see. It. I won that easily. Three stock. Look at the lips. He's ready to go. Juiced up on his water. What a game. <coughs> Yanni in shambles. Yeah, the buzz. The buzz likes swing Pikmin dash. Where are we going into? Small battlefield. I feel like Steve's like the stage a lot. I don't think it's bad for Olimar, it's just a little bit more compact. That platform, those platforms in conjunction with the blocks that Steve can make, can make a pretty frustrating fortress to get through, especially if they make a really good one. And I know Yanni is pretty keen on making those more complex walls. It'll be like multi-layered. It's not just simple line and roof. So we'll see what he does here. Starts out with a minecart. Gross. I don't blame the buzz for dropping down and throwing here. Because I would have done the same thing. And this is one of those things where it's like, okay, he did this this time. So next game, if you're on a similar stage or whatever, you need to be mindful. Maybe start the game just throwing up there because he can't reach you up there on the platform. He gets a quick 40 whatever because 
55. That's that's how those up tilt combos are. I like the weight. How did he detonate that? Wait. Was it the up tilt that detonated it? Does the up tilt hit the platform? Or hit the uh the up tilt detonates the 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 plate, the foot pit plate. I did not know that. I know I knew Anvil did it, but I didn't know hitting it did that. That's really smart on Yanni's part, and that's something I didn't know. I am almost positive DeBuzz did not expect that to happen. Hence why he jumped up there thinking, okay, this is not a problem. Really, really good play on Yanni's part. Now DeBuzz is in disadvantage. Almost lost first stock. Honestly, getting knocked over there was kind of nice, because yeah, he took a ton of damage. He's like 100, 115%. But he's got the entire stage now. He can repluck. He's going to have a purple coming up. And now, yeah, he's losing the percent war. But now he's able to do things like this and start getting his percent. Start zoning again and making Yanni play his game. You see Yanni goes for his wall. The buzz isn't having any of it. Gets grabbed. He did hit the pressure plate, yeah. The buzz got ninth, I think. Or 13th. I don't remember which one. I like how the Buzz opts for a lot of regular shielding in this matchup. So he, he gets him here, and I don't blame him. You don't want to parry something. It's just not worth it. Solid back air here. Uh, he ledge cancels that, so that's hard to punish. Shielding this, and I like this. What I would have done, if you're going to get out of there, I don't think rolling... <sighs> Never mind. I would have rolled right, and I would have got hit. Yanni actually went down there and did it. Tried to hit him as well. So rolling out was good. Um, I guess it's just what he does after he approaches. And the reason I don't think he should have approached here, he should have ran away and side beat more is because if you go back, like, look, he gets hit here. He's in this scenario. He rolls away. He throws white. He should have not approached. He should have ran away, thrown blue, and then, or ran under him and maybe tried to up smash or something. Like, if he would have run under instead of jumping, he probably could have up smashed. If he would have been, like, right here, runs under up smash, he might have been able to intercept before the bear catches him. But because he has that blue, he has nothing to protect him when he's going in. The white's latched on, the blue fair's got a hit, and if he's off on timing, which he is here, he gets hit. Whereas if he retreats, pulls the or throws the blue from a farther distance, he can then approach the purple in a more spaced out way. He can see how he wants to get in. He can maybe throw the purple and come with a dash attack, something like that. So I think the blue was a little rough, especially because he's at that high percent, so Yanni's going to be looking to kill. Kind of just throwing out kill moves left and right, down air, side B, back air, whatever it is, he wants to throw it out. He wants to kill you kill percent um and i think the budget just didn't did not take that into consideration when we ran in there he was trying to fight his way a little bit too much in when i don't think he needed to good up b usage there up tilt combos they they are what they are you can try an sdm all you want but sometimes you should get fucked i don't like that purple side b There, so like he, he did this and then he gets down and then this little sequence where he'd done it in and out, I think the grab would have worked really well. Um, because he kind of gave him a little bit of stuttered movement like that to scare him, right? And then he's got the blue so he can he can like run in and out, tr bait out a roll because people might get scared and then be like retreating, pivot grabbing, catch him. Yeah, you're still punishable, but what he ends up doing instead, he fares and then he gets punished because he's side being with a non-purple. Once again, applying no legitimate pressure. Because he throws it, and then the, then the Steve's like, okay, did you even hit my shield? Right? So it ends up just not doing anything there, and then he ends up getting forward, or back here for it. I get why he doesn't want to just approach. But um, I feel like he needs to get a little bit more in there. Like, he has two purples now. He could really create some hard-to-find pressure. Like, I think he should not have done that. I think that raw back air was not right. What I think he should have done was potentially mix him up by running in. Like, he gets the second purple, right? Like, he knocks him back. Wait, and then run in and jump side B this way with one purple to the left. So he goes, ah, what's happening? Maybe he drops shield, maybe he tries to attack, and then immediately follow the back air. So you're still going for the back air. You're going a little bit deeper into it because you've been drifting in already. It's not as telegraphed because you're not jump. L look how far away he's jumping, right? That's not even spaced appropriately for Steve to hit him, right? So he needs to get in there. And I think when you have those two purples, you can keep it a little bit ambiguous like that because you can run, throw the purple the other way, and then back air, and he's just not going to be ready for it. So I think if you wanted the pressure, that would have been a better way to do it because this way is just a little too predictable and he ends up not even spacing it the best and he gets diamond forward smash for it. 
Yeah, Steve's animations are disgustingly ambiguous. Well, Steve is kind of an uh, abomination, so that's why. I like this. Goes for the yellow. Um, That's fine, I guess. I, I don't think the down smash would have hit either there. So I don't blame him for going for that. Gets the get-up attack. He said Yanni is in his head this game. I don't blame him for that. He probably thought, oh, he might still have lag from the dash attack. And then he ends up getting hit. Good forward air. I don't. I, he got the kill, I guess. I, I, I'm not even. I'm not even the judge. He got the kill. That's like that's not what I would have done, but he made it work. So if you can get those dare spikes, you can't. You can't tell him now, you know. Good, good. This I didn't like. Hate them, but I. I think the purple was amazing there. But what he needed to have done was either throw the short hop purple side B into a red something, maybe a red grab, maybe a red fair, whatever it is, or dash grab with the purple because once again he's running in with no pressure and he can force Steve to respond to something potentially shield which he does here he even gave him the shield and that's one of the reason um one of the reasons why the grab would have worked so well there because he's, he's scared about getting hit because maybe he he just said the white he doesn't know what's happening he sees a purple people often shield the purple you can punish them for thinking they know what option it is so I think he could have done this better because that up air or that up smash isn't safe right he has the backwards there up smash just isn't the best and I think there are better ways to pressure than just running up and up smashing there honestly he could have even he could have um ran in he could have ran in uh pivot down smash charged it slightly and potentially broke his shield as well that one's a little bit riskier, especially if Yanni's quick on his trigger finger. If he wanted to pull it, he would have had to charge it a little bit because it's a red and a purple. But that's an additional way he could have potentially broke his shield and pressured outside of just the raw up smash. Yep, now to shield. That's awkward. So he got into a similar spot as he did the last game where he's like, oh, I want to punish Minecart. But look how close he is this time to it. He's right there. And you have the red zone. I don't know if that changes the startup speed, but I know it is faster overall. But it's just he's getting caught before he's able to, even able to get a hit out. He needed more space to try and intercept that. I think he should have gone a little bit farther away. Plus, this platform makes it a little bit awkward. You don't want to land on it. Um, honestly, just a hard thing to get out of. I literally got hit by Yanni when I was fighting him at Riptide because I had him like up in the uh, up in the air on, on one of the stage. I don't remember what it was. I think it was like Battlefield or some shit or FD. And I'm up on the stage. I go up to hit him, and he's just redstone minecart when I was too close, and I got I got blown up for it. And I died because I was near the ceiling at like 80. Hey, 34, what's up? I like that. I like that that weight a lot. Another time where I thought he was gonna grab, right? Lands a really good nair, fair. That that's a juicy run up grab. Like, yeah, I guess he could have jumped away. Um, but it just seemed like grab was a really good opportunity there. But he ends up not getting punished, so I guess it's not bad. That's interesting. So he hits he hits the fair and tech chase. And instead of going for, like, I probably would have ran under pluck, desync, nonsense, maybe a pivot grab, maybe a smash tech, depending on where I think he's going to go. But I like how he just goes for the, the raw damage here, getting the fair, keeping it simple. He knows he needs to make it percent quick. It's the back throw. I would have called that yellow back personally. I don't like what he did there again. You know, in the moment where Steve's off stage, he's going to try and recover. Um, you know, he might go to the ledge, he might not. But either way, that yellow is a valuable asset. You can zone with it very well with forward smash. You can space with it. You can hit two frames easier with it. But a lot of different reasons you want to keep it. And he opts to throw the blue instead of, I think, whistling the yellow would have been better. Um, and he ends up making it back. And then he ledge cancels again. What he needs to start doing is, like, what he could have done here is, if he's throwing the blue, that's fine. When he sees that and he starts running, he needs to immediately shark, short hop shark that up air. Because he's going to go right here. And he tries. He full hops. I, I think that might be a full hop. Um... It's hard to tell from this exact thing. I think that was a I think that was a full hop because he's pretty high. Um, yeah, it's a full hop. And if he short hop up airs there, quick hit him. Like he saw, he ran off for a back air. He's definitely getting sniped to that up air. Um, and you're able to intercept him. And it's the same thing with Palu ledge cancels, whatever it is. And I think he was just maybe a little scared because he's at kill percent, but he had the right play. He just didn't execute on it properly. Um, and that that was what he should have done if he didn't want to keep that yellow there. So once again, you got a really good lineup here. Like, this is a comeback lineup. I like that. Gets the air dodge, the nair again. Players, oftentimes, if they don't have a super fast option, Luigi nair, Luigi cyclone, snake grenade, they can panic, buffer, uh, spot dodge, or air dodge out of neutral air, oftentimes going into the stage when they're at the ledge. DeBuzz recognizes this. He did something similar a little bit earlier in the stock. Um, it's something I do as well. I usually go for up smash reads, but he opts to go for the 
uh, back air read going, hey, I neared you. Oh, you're scared? Don't worry, I've got a back air waiting for you. I didn't actually have a true follow-up off of that up smash in that moment, and I'm going to punish you. So that was Yanni fucking up, not knowing his shit, right? He definitely could have just landed and shielded and prayed, but the buzz was ready for it, capitalizing once again on, oh, I know what you're going to do when I hit you before I've even hit you with it, and that was really good. So, you know, he's got a deficit, 85% to zero. Um, Yanni's resources are pretty tame right now. Only a little bit of metal, uh, very little stone, very little wood, and Olmar's got two purple. So he's going to go try and mine, I'm sure, but he can only do so much. And this is where the buzz needs to really keep the pressure on. And I think he, he starts out kind of tame. I don't like this. Like, yeah, dodge this. I don't like the up smash. I like keep the side B's rolling. They allow you to pressure from afar. Look how far Steve is right now. This is side B pressure. This is... That mid-range, they can't fight back very easily. You can create... It's iron, I'm going to call it metal. You can create legitimate block strings on him. You can create a series of pressure that's difficult to punish. Remember, if Pikmin hit a shield and bounce onto the floor for that brief moment before they rejoin your line and stuff, they are not vulnerable. So you can get, you know, some essentially free pressure that makes your purple Pikmin not going to die and let him not just run away and start mining that easily. And then he ends up getting grabbed there. Not the best spacing, but it's all right. I like this. He's still just throwing, throwing, throwing. You can just throw that white. Create some form of pressure. The fucking up smash. The buzz. Stop up smashing. Like he had this really good pressure. Grab the motherfucker. Grab the motherfucker. If you dash grab, yeah, it's not beating every option. Sure. But it's beating roll away and it's beating holding shield. Up smash beats only spot dodge. Maybe jump. Maybe. But I don't see why he would jump in that case because he's not that type of character. You need to have some confidence in your dash grabs with purples. They're such a good mix-up because nobody expects it. He's at low percent. You're dash grabbing. You can down throw fair. You can probably even down throw back air, especially with a white latched on. Get him to an easy 50%, but instead you're opting for these greedy up smashes that are going to get you punished if he shields it. Gets his third purple. Loses the other one, though, but that's fine. That had to have been a fuck-up. But it's alright. He's not out of this just yet. I like that. I like that. Using the Pikmin to lag him there. Keep it in simple. I like holding shield, recognizing Steve's not going to grab. He's not going to do anything. And now Steve's approaching him. And this is huge, right? You see Yanni. He's getting fucking nervous. Because he doesn't want to die. And DeBuzz is locking it down on that. Tries to go for a ledge jump back air. I'm also in the process of learning those myself. If he hits that, he's guaranteed dead. He's at 100. Purple back air would do it. But he's got to watch out. Yanni wants a smash tech or a back air. I can feel it in my bones. Um... Gets a weird air dodge there, but he manages to land it. Tries to go for the up smash. God, the buzz. You are fucking killing me, bud. And he gets the up air. Doesn't kill those. Steve's heavier than I thought. And now, look, no iron. No, no, no side B, no down air. He has to fight him one on one. There's a purple. He doesn't want to fight it. He lands the back air and gets him. I really liked that from the buzz. Keeping his composure. He stopped going for these randy ass up smashes as much. Kind of kept it. Let Steve approach. He's out of resources. He has to fight me with his justice tools. And they're not very good. If he can't minecart, if he can't anvil, he's not a threat up in the air. And that's a big thing to exploit. And I think the buzz is doing that very well. Keeping it centered. Watching out, keeping away from him. And honestly, great, great, great comeback from the Buzz after such a beginning deficit. I think he really pulled it together. Uh, I think he could clean up his purple usage a little bit and make it a bit more ambiguous and stop going for raw up smashes. If this is a pre patch, yeah, buddy, I tell him break that shield all day. Um, but just mixing it up a bit more or at least reading what your opponent wants to do because oftentimes players will opt to get away from you instead of jumping. Most players I fight, they only jump away when they know their character's mobility can do it, or they're really, really tuned into what Olimar does. And I genuinely believe Yanni is not one of those players who's very tuned into how Olimar works. So a little bit of cleanup there could have been done. DeBuzz had some close calls here, but he managed to clutch it out, and that's really good for him. back small battlefield understandable I, that was definitely yanni's game to lose thank you aws i'm sure if i watch this back i can give some insight on exactly what yanni's doing but i am trying to keep it centric to olimar i'm also trying to keep in mind I, I i think the buzz has very much the same mentality i take when i fight steve and it's just keep it simple keep it slow Make him play your game at the end of the day. Like, he has good tools, but if you avoid them, you can definitely win. Let's see what Yanni does. I mean, it's, he's got to take a game. The set's long as fuck, unless they're just padding out time so you can't tell which, uh, what it is. This is unfortunate. One sec. This is unfortunate. 
goes the up smash here off the parry. Um, but Olimar's bad. So then that happens. I think if he would have parried maybe directly under the up smash, or directly under the up B, it might have worked, but he ran away, so he ends up getting clipped, jumps out, uh, and now he gets up aired into Imagination by Steve. Similar starting to the last game where he's, it's a big percent early on, but he manages to roll back on stage, and I like that a lot. Uh, he, he gets back on, and what he does here, I don't like. I think he should have kept running. I think he should have double jumped away because the way he spaced this back here it just wasn't safe. Um, it just wasn't going to work. He ends up getting neared instead. Whereas if he kept running, he could have maybe tried to regain his composure a little bit more. Steve doesn't have the best, like, rushdown approach in that sense, especially with a minecart already out. He can't do it again. He only has the one Pikmin. Uh, so a little bit of a, of a misspacing on his on his kind of fighting back option there. And because of that, he takes a few hits. Gets the up air, though. Not bad. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like you hit the up air, and then... Funny enough, here's a little rule for the Olimar players out here. Um, once again, unless a player typically knows the ins and outs of Olimar and they fault him a lot, or if they're a very like fine-tuned top player, when you up air people below the ledge, they almost always fall with an attack. So you can oftentimes up air, grab ledge, they fall with an attack, you get up attack, and then you hit them. Yanni ends up jumping there because the buzz does as well, but if he falled, I rather confident that get up attack would have hit. Or even maybe a drop down up here if he wants to go for it again. But I don't like the jump there. Because look what it ends up happening. He ends up getting back and then he gets up tilted into it again. Same setup as last time. It's it's almost mimicking the last stock. Because he's having a couple poor choices. Attacking when he gets back on stage. I've talked about that a lot on my streams earlier when he, when he got back on. You need to regain your footing instead of getting a moment to attack and then attacking. Because if it doesn't work exactly, you put yourself back in disadvantage. And Olimar as a character is essentially is essentially non-functioning at top level if you cannot uh, hold on to your stocks properly. What he should have done here? Alright, so let's go back. Uh, when he up here is here, I would have get up attacked or even maybe drop down to it. Or even roll potentially. Jump was terrible. Shouldn't have done that. What he could have done here, he rolls here. This roll's not the play. I, I don't think it's the play. Um, I think he should have waited on ledge for a moment. Seen what's see see if if Yanni's jittery at all, right? Because he needs to mind he needs to he needed to have remembered that he did this exact same setup the last time, except the first time he jumped, the TNT is still exploding. That's that's not because of the buzz. He might not have caught that, but here he could have dropped down side bead and tried to land off stage real quick and then shield. Or drop down side B, try to air dodge in, drop down side or drop down side B, um, and then try and up B around it. Different ways to do that, maneuver around it. But he had to get out of the situation, and I don't think the roll was going to do it. It was very similar to that jump last time. It just puts him right in that TNT spot. It's a throw. Good DI on that forward air. Not letting him get too much percent. Yanni's all over him though. Good forward air. I like that pullback. Okay, wing pick and dash. Kind of stopped by the blocks, but it got rid of them, and I think that's the important thing. That's an unfortunate example, again, of where minecart, you know, you're at a distance where it's just a little too close, so the setup gets going, and your move loses, he wins. That's how the move works sometimes. Um, he gets punished there. Kind of just like, I don't want to call it a miscalculation. It's just, it's it's very hard to thread that needle, because you do want to swat it away sometimes, but there's times where it just doesn't always work. I like this kind of just zoning, uh, getting that lapse damage or those random aerials. And that's the important thing. Side B and aerials just kind of rack him up to you and get him at a kill percent. Uh, and Yanni's not really doing much to stop him. I think he could have back aired that, but I don't blame him for panic side being. Fair is so good for getting rid of blocks. I definitely recommend it. I like the back air. Showing some of that patience again. Funny enough, that's a time where I thought he was going to run up up smash because I would have ran up up smash, but he didn't do it. And I don't blame him. But what he could have done. Oh, look how juicy that shield break is. Look how juicy it is, guys. He runs up, doesn't shield, double hit, shield gone, Yanni's dead. But instead, he opts to shield. He's a bit scared. Yanni goes for a grab, um, and, and he gets the back here, but it doesn't kill. I like that. Holding on to his purples there, I wouldn't have thrown them either. Uh, you definitely want to keep on to these because they are essentially your win condition, and it's your way of kind of dealing with Steve getting overpowered or superpowered or whatever. Um, I think he could honestly like try and get off stage or either mash super fast to get out or wait till he's off stage. I don't know if it popped him out automatically. 
Uh, I get that one run back, can't punish. Another thing where, um, you know, he was too late, so he took the best punish he could. I don't blame him. Here, though, it's another one of those awkward-ass... Olimar does not do 45 degrees well at all. Like, from, like, 30 to 60, really. It's just a nightmare, right? Because his, his fair is active for three frames at 7 through 9, and it's like this. So that's very hard to hit. Up air is like this, but that's mainly on top. The side hitbox is not the best. So what's happening is this is coming at an angle that's just a fucking nightmare to punish. And I know this because I've gotten hit here a ton of times. The buzz should have simply respected this. I get he wants to intercept him. Yanni's at kill percent. He's got two purples. But it's not worth it. Unless you can challenge him this way or this way, it, you can't do this way. You don't have a good enough move for it. So he's going to run up and he's going to get hit by the minecart with, with redstone, which is going fast, which is hitting hard. And then he gets knocked away. And then he gets hit again because the move's stupid. But he has to respect that move. At that angle, he can't do it. It's not worth risking it when he could just retreat center stage, let Yanni come in, and then fucking hit him. Like right there, Yanni just gave it to him. But now this is the hard part. I, I think he could have grabbed off this, right? Like, if he would have pivot grabbed with the white, that's a juicy pivot grab, right? Because Yanni's probably going to shield after he lands because he just whipped an aerial. White pivot grab, two Pikmin, even solid length on that. You can pull him in, get a quick down throw forward air, maybe even into a rejab, into a side B or something, where you're still getting like 30-ish percent off that. Not bad at all. I think the buds definitely could play a little bit more to each of his color's strengths. Um, and you think them in a non, the non uh, immediate use, right? So instead of white side B, you go for a white pivot grab. Instead of a purple smash stack, you go for a purple grab, right? Those grabs are so potent because they're they're the mix up of it. People don't always expect it. Okay. Good. That see, that was a good up smash. Waited, waited for him to land, and then caught him. Uh, I would have sharked with up air there. But it ended up working out, I guess. So what's kind of annoying is that purples don't really hit those blocks when you side beat them into that like that. They treat it almost like an actual wall where they're just they just kind of ride it. I like the way he's spacing him here now, staying more mid range, giving himself some some room to react, using the purple side beat to kind of approach for him until he finds a good opening so that he can get in there and letting himself deal with a minecart or something if he needs to. He's not staying too close to Steve for long. Like you see, he gets in there and then he goes immediately back to that mid range and he starts spacing the back airs again. He doesn't want to stay up up close because he's not he's not he doesn't want to box him and I don't blame him. You don't want to box Steve because he's mashing fucking kill moves and you see how it plays him here, hits him with a really good up air on his up B, intercepting him and just utilizing those purples well, kind of staying in that mid range, which is really uncomfortable for Steve. God damn it, the buzz! If you don't start tech chasing with fucking down smash. fine i would have purple side beat there i would have because look right so you miss this and then you purple side b he's he's going into tumble guaranteed he might not hit the stage he might not jump away but you're gonna hit him and then you're able to get potentially a tech chase or something but instead you opt to go for a fair after the bear but you already missed you're too slow you end up getting punished and now you're off stage in a risky spot and it's just like you didn't know to fuck around with all that this game sucks <laughs> Wait, how did this purple not make it? Oh, never mind. He sucks. Oh, wait. Never mind. He threw it. I, I missed that. The game's fine. Oh, now he goes to the white paper grab. Well, he made a bag, and that's fine. Just let it just let it go. Just let it, oh, he let it go a little too long. I've done that before. Because you think it'll pop out, but you actually do have to mash before you get to the blast zone. So I don't blame him for doing that. See, that's good. He retreated. He recognized, okay, I can't really do that 45-degree angle to the well, the 30-degree. Let me jump up back here, intercept him, and that's what he should have been doing before. It's all about understanding the distances between you guys, which ones you can and can't punish, and I think he did that much better there. Good forward air. Staying at a distance where it's awkward, recognizing Yanni has to approach. I'm not sure why Yanni isn't doing his runaway set up a fortress to it. Maybe he has too few materials, doesn't really feel comfortable. But because the buzz has kept him in a spot where he's just really bad off a lot of this game, he's able to get back. Solid up B from the buzz, but I think he squanders it. So he does this really good up B. He goes high and he gets away, right? He's like, okay, cool. I would have landed with fair and I would have immediately ran the fuck away. Not, not jump back into him he ran jumped came back and bitch go away you still have a purple go to the ledge i doesn't matter but i said you have to jump in you get fucking four air f smashed 
by Old Masher McGee. <sighs> the buzz, the buzz, the buzz. This is what you broke your rule. You were so antsy to get a kill that you lost. I'm, I'm going to be baffled if he wins this game. Because I don't think he should. He might, but I don't think he should. Not with the way he's playing. But what is this? What is this, the buzz? So, you make it back after you, you make a bit of a misstep, right? You get on stage. Fantastic. You get a purple. I get it. You go for the forward smash. I don't blame you. Sometimes you do that. Don't run back in. Don't go reassert yourself back into the fight. He's got diamond. You have one purple. You think you can just mash kill moves like him? No, that's not how this works. Sakurai nerfed that. You need to go back to your zoning, go back to making him play your game, and then I'll play him there. You will literally lose if you do these things. And you do. This is 100% deserved by the bus. He should have stuck to his game plan. And then he's getting greedy and he's going for back ears. What is this? Start zoning with F smash. He's at the ledge. What's he going to do? The mine card in? Cool. F smash. Deserved it. Deserved. Yeah, I did have gold for dinner. It was great. Goes back to town. Very good stage. I'm surprised that grab didn't work. Um, but it'd be like that sometimes. There are like weird percents where it just doesn't work. Okay, can spot dodge. He gets knocked off. A little bit of a combo here. Not a problem though. He didn't get too much off that. Like 40% is nothing. I like that back again. I thought it wasn't going to hit, but then that was really solid interception by his part. Like if you want to play a little bit more greedy, right? When you're at low percent, I get it. Because you can mess around with it. But when you're in kill percent and 70% is definitely kill percent to diamond shit, you need to be more respectful of that. Olimar does have a bad stage. It's callous. 100% a bad stage for Olimar. I think Towns is the best stage, though. On average. I like that. I like that. Using that. Swapping up between your lineup well. Utilizing the yellow's range. Catching him in an awkward spot. That's what I'm talking about. You want to sit right outside his range and threaten him. Definitely going to space out a little bit better to keep the purple and ledge cancel it, but it's not the end of the world. Let's for a forward smash once again. Nice. There we go. Gets the purple grab, right? He's not dead sure, but you're putting him back off stage. You're putting him back into an awkward spot, and that's what you need to do. If you have to chip him down until he dies, that's fine. Good forward air. Mixing it up. He's going to focus on that grab because it's a blue. Yeah, you should... You definitely should. If you're picking Callus, though, you're making your disadvantage way harder than it needs to be with Olimar. Like, 100%. There's very few matchups where you want to go there. They exist, sure, but they're very few. Like, and your opponent's probably just not utilizing it well. That was really good. Gets his purple back. Make sure to run over there to get it behind the block so it's there in time. Fantastic interception. I like that. Waiting. Holding shield by the buzz. He ends up getting back here there because he goes for a bit of a greedy down smash. I don't blame him. Uh, I don't think the roll down smash was the play. I, I, I see why you went for it, but I think it was just a little premature. Look how powerful that neutral air dodge is at mixing people up. Like, it's so hard for them to, to get it right on where you are. And if they don't have a move that hits on both sides, it's very difficult for them to punish that appropriately. Uh, I would have nared that, honestly. When he get knocked down here, he jumps. I would have rose instant nair and called him on my way up. Uh, and I think it would have hit because he would have had it out a little bit earlier, but I could be wrong. He might have still been able to shield it. But even then, nair is really awkward to punish, and he got punished on fair anyway, so it didn't make too much of a difference. Good. Go back to the zoning. So we got to do. Yes. Yes. Get that chip damage. Have him kill himself. Oh, if you would up smash there, shield was gone, but I don't blame him for forward smashing. Yep. That's a classic Steve thing. Yeah, smash into the wall. Back here, he's dead. He got greedy. There we go. He's got diamond, but I mean, you've got your diamond. Too. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, what did you do there? Did you air dodge past him? He probably had that air dodge buffered 
from the side B, thinking he knew the air dodge the fair with it, and it kind of just stayed active after that, and it ended up catching him, getting him killed. That would be my best guess on that. Goes back to retreating, using those aerials to keep him away. That's good. That's what he has to do. Big thing here is not to die. Get his quick damage. I like that. Now reset. Pluck. Good. Pluck. Now you're back into it. You get a purple again, and that's the most important thing. You get a white doing a ton of damage. Doesn't matter if you trade a couple aerials. You're already winning percent war again. He has literally no resources. This is huge. Look at that. Look at that. Look. Oh, mmm, mmm. Warms my heart to watch Steve have literally nothing. And Yanni opts to get right back in there with literally nothing. And he gets back here for it. And the buzz hits a wonderful down air. I It warms my heart to watch him fuck Yanni up so bad. Constantly saying that mid-range. Constantly breaking his shit. That Yanni's just mad strapped for, for nothing. Seeing that little like block the the line through the square when he tries to block in the air was was amazing i really liked debuzz's gameplay in the, the set overall i think he was able to fight a little bit more up close and personal at times when he didn't need to uh because he had a lower percent and that's fine at the higher percent when he was in, in threat of getting like f smashed or backyard he shouldn't have but overall he stuck to the game plan of kind of staying defensive mid-rangey and almost zone breaking a lot on his own but also Staying close enough to force Yanni into his range with the side Bs and those aerials and the smashes. I think that was really good. Uh, if he can just clean up a little bit of his Pikmin usage, especially with purples, mixing it up a bit better, creating some more complex strings of them so it's not always very obvious, uh, he'll probably be even more of a threat, but that was very good overall. I think that playstyle really speaks to the buzz's strengths. He's very good at kind of playing that slower, I'm going to wait you out game, and I think he did that very well while also being very dynamic in his gameplay because it, it was not like just camp at all. I think it was just overall great set. But now we're going to watch something that was not a great set. The Buzz for Swatty. So I didn't watch any of the Buzz's sets over the weekend. So I'm going into all of these blind. But we're going to peep this one. Me too, Olimar. I have... Not the most experience in the matchup, so there's some things that I just don't might not be the most accurate on. I know it's annoying because um, I think Min Min's bad because she gets hit a lot randomly, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, I think Mewtwo can be very annoying. His side beat's annoying. He can kind of just randomly get on you and hit you pretty hard, but he also dies very easy, so I don't think it's it's bad one way or another. I think it's a perfectly fine matchup. So I'm have to not bad. See, I, I don't like this. I don't... This is what I was telling the buzz about, right? When he was talking to me about, like, oh, start out, throw the red, keep the yellow, throw the blue, or whatever, it's like, yeah, but what if someone rushes you down? And literally look what happens when the game starts. Wadi is on his ass. He starts, throws red, up airs with yellow, and he gets some lag from it, I'm pretty sure. And then he throws the blue off stage, and Wadi's like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Fight me. And that's what I don't like. That's why you need... I would rather have my opponent cycle my Pikmin for me. I can jump. I can side beat him. I can fare after. We can start engaging it. That's one of the downsides of doing that. And you won't always know if your opponent's going to rush you down or not. It's kind of hit or miss. So that's one of the downsides of that style of management. Um, and it's something to keep in mind as well. But he ends up whistling, dodging the forward air, getting his own percent. I like retreating there. Uh, I'll, I'm going to try and go to it, but it depends. I'm also going to let's make big moves and uh, Genesis around that time. And those have priority. So it's a matter of money, money really. Good forward air. Intercepts him there. Good, good. He doesn't want reds either, and I don't blame him. I don't want reds either, but let my pony kill him for me. I like this. Like, let, let Wadi mash side be to his heart's content. Good, good wing Pikmin dash. You're, you're going for latch damage here until you catch him with a stray move and he dies. Forward air going through that would have been uncomfortable, but I don't blame him. <sighs> Brother, you've got to stop up smasher. I don't know. It just, it... Alright, maybe don't stop up smashing because I feel like I would definitely go for it in certain instances too. But, like, it just didn't work there. Wadi knows he's at kill percent. He sees the purple. If I saw purple... And I was fighting Olimar. I'd be like, he wants to hit me with some wacky ass man. Like, it's just, it's a little too good to be true. Grab him. Run forward, maybe. 
run forward, charge down smash, see if you can bait a spa dodge or something out of him, or at least charge the up smash, see if he drops shield, and then punish him. But you gotta mix it up a bit. I think that the raw up smashes can be a little bit too predictable. Bad in air, gets punished. I like that side B. Ooh, that was good. What did he do? I like, covered his, he made him neutral air dodge with the up air, and then he, no, he just down aired and he gets down smash. That was really good by Wadi. But the buzz did it to himself. He, he, he got himself put off stage because he was he's getting greedy. That was, that was really good. I would have grabbed there. I would have grabbed there. Because oftentimes players will, um, especially when it's with like slower frame data on the ground, they'll tend to shield after they do an aerial. And if he spaces this right, it's probably going to grab you. And I, I think it would with the way his tail is. Probably would have grabbed Mewtwo on a spot dodge. But instead he opts to up smash with a blue. It's not safe, my guy. Hell, at least jab on shield to mix it up. But if you're in shield, grabs is fine. Alright, so you, you lose those. Okay, you jump. When you neutral air dodge here, I would have landed. I probably would have plucked and got dash attacked, so I guess that's not the best. But I think the Nair, I don't know if it's an accident, but it definitely did not need to be done. That's a good Nair. Ah, uh, I would have pivot grabbed that again. I Another use of, like, he knows he has no white coming up. There's no way he doesn't. Run back. Pivot grab. Look at me. He's coming in at the juicy down throw. Forward air, down throw, back air. Put him at a 50. Once again, getting yourself back into it. He's off stage, and now you've got a lineup that is pretty threatening. But instead, he opts to go for the lash into the side, into the jab. Then he gets grabbed. Not great. The down throw. So this was a little awkward for Debuzz, right? So he gets the uh, the dash grab, but it's 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 kind of like a tipper dash grab. So he's already not close to Wadi, right? Because uh, if you've been in my stream before, if you play Olimar, you'll know. Um, let me see if I can get a good. You see the distance. Olimar's grab is weird in that, depending if you dash standing or pivot grab and how you do them and the spacing of it all, there will be different distances between the opponent who grabbed by the Pikmin and Olimar. This is a bit of a farther one, right? Wadi is no idiot. He's going to be DIing away on this throw. He recognizes there's no way I can DI way, uh, die if I DI away here. It's not even a blue Pikmin. You might not even think about that. But he recognizes DI away, get away from the combo, right? So he DIs down throw out. He's already at 60%. It's a light character. There's absolutely no way that he's following up off this combo. So what Debuzz can do if he wants a down throw, which is fine, he needs to down throw into side B. Or down throw, run forward, bait out air dodge, F smash. But Wadi opts to use forward air, which is why they down throw side B would have been a fine choice there. He could have down thrown, retreat, side B, latch damage on. Maybe he kills the blue or whatever that he throws, and then he comes in and grabs the white dash grab, creates that additional lag for him. I think paying attention to that, recognizing my down throw doesn't work at these higher percents for combos, is a good way to mix that stuff up. Um, bait, No, Olimar's not free with Gyro. Also, DeBuzz might have other characters for Rob. I don't know. Also, Wadi just wants to play Mewtwo. Oh, this wing pick and dash. Gets it there, and then what happens? He runs in, gets caught by the Nair. It's popped out into forward air. Wadi's uh, Wadi's really good at intercepting him on Rob, it seems. I like that down air. So that's the problem with those rising bears. I mean, it's just not safe. That's kind of a hindsight thing. I don't blame him for going for it. Maybe Wadi jumps out. Maybe Wadi tries to roll or something. You catch him, and the Mewtwo's dead. Um, but that's one of those mistakes there, so you got to recognize, okay, Wadi's a little bit more comfortable with letting me do the committing first, um, so I'm going to have to mix it up. That's another example of where Olimar's caught at that, like, 
diagonal angle where it's really rough. You see here, he goes for the down air. Wadi goes, nah, man, I'm cool. Approaches from down diagonal. Hits him with a forward air. Dodges the attack very well. And that's one of Lauren's weaknesses. The way he was approaching that Mewtwo there. Just put him in a very susceptible spot. Um, he might have been better off just up being, like, away. Like, jumping or double jumping even. Right, jump from the ledge and jump again and get out of there. Or create a down air over there. But I think that was a little bit more susceptible. As we've seen in this game, Wadi's fine with letting the buzz pull the trigger first. And he's actually punishing him for it. Um, and this is another example of that. Good way to the buzzes part there. Misspaced back here. Not what you want to see. Don't dash grab him. Okay, thank God. I was like, don't. The buzz. This is why you don't form a reliance on certain techniques. I'm guilty of this. Maybe with desyncs, maybe with down, double with down smash, whatever it is. Wing Pikmin dash is not a legitimate approach option. It is not a cure-all. It does not do it. When you're landing with a high up forward air like that, you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable spot. At full screen... Wadi, unless he's mashing buttons, he's going to go, okay, that's cool, dude. Thanks for the grab. You're dead. That's exactly what he does, and that plays once again into the bus pulling the trigger first. He's down. He's antsy. He's missing his kills. He wants to get a kill, and he's just not landing in here. Mind you, you know, this is top 16. Olimar, the buzz didn't lose already. The bracket had been going on. His mindset might not have been as kind of stoic and, and iron clad as it was against Shiani, but... You see here, he's just a little bit more fidgety. He's not really holding on to his game plan, and he's not comfortable and confident with taking a bit slower. He stopped four minutes on that clock. He could have taken it slower, and he didn't feel the confidence in that. And now Wadi's probably going to blast him. I don't see this game going much longer. Never mind, he gets a down smash. He's still back in it. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like throwing the white. I guess you want the double purple, but... The white is such a powerful tool that you can start zoning with that. You can throw it on, make him get it off. He's at low percent. He's probably going to want to do that. And instead, what happens is you throw the white, and now you've cornered yourself. You've cornered yourself, buddy. You didn't even get the purple you threw the white off for. It was unfortunate. It was unfortunate. It's definitely awkward no matter what. You're at a high percent. You're at kill percent. He's coming down with invincibility. It's not going to be easy. No matter how you square, it's not going to blame you necessarily for dying. I think just... Maybe keeping the white and trying to, like, run in a way that makes it a little bit more awkward. Throw this picking from farther off stage and then trying to make your recovery there would have worked. Uh, but you just had an unfortunate moment where you were stuck in shield. Um, and, and and then you dropped it because you were probably scared of the grab. I don't blame you. Uh, you jumped. I definitely, once again, don't blame you. Maybe the roll would have been better there. Maybe even holding shield and trying to react to what he's doing. Uh, he ends up catching you and up dying there. Just... Awkward spot where you put yourself. I'm a big fan of the uh, the neutral air dodge. Like, jump, neutral air dodge, crawl someone up, make it really ambiguous to where you're going to land. Try and burn their invincibility. Oh, excuse me. That way, and you can try and punish them there. Uh, this way, it was kind of more like, hey, I'm right here. You know, maybe after you got on stage, you could have gone back to ledge, refresh your invincibility, and tried to play a little bit of a different game there. Um, but it's just hard no matter how you squared. He was definitely gunning for your stock at that moment. Oh, all right, Wadi. Smashville? Okay. Like, I just hit some of that quick command grab when he runs in. What What are these hits? I feel like the buzz keeps thinking he's fine, and then, like, some lingering hitbox or some shit from YouTube just, like, hangs out there and clips him. Like, he gets... <laughs> they both grab here, but Olimar gets called first before his grab is active. And then he goes down, right? And then he gets clipped by dash attack. And then he gets clipped by fucking up air, or back air. And it's like, oh, jeez. I like that now out of there. Okay, that works, that works. All right, good. Juicy percent. That was a good use of that lineup there, right? Get the red down throw. He's at low percent. He's not going to go far. I have the white last on. I'm loving these nares. That's an example of Beauty's hurt box being literal dog shit. Mewtwo, you fucking suck. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. I'd be so pressed if I got hit by that. <laughs> that was funny. Go back to throwing. Go back to throwing them. Let him spam. 
let him spam that shit all day to buzz. I, it doesn't matter. Right? Because you bait it out, and then you run in your dash grab, or you run in your down tilt, or dash tag. But instead, you opt to get a little bit closer, you're scared of throwing because he's matched inside me. Who gives a fuck? Just don't throw your purple, right? Bait it out. Fuck. Run, jump, throw purple the other, side B the other way. Run in and jab his ass or something. But instead, you end up putting yourself in a bad spot and then you get up smashed. Jump, get hit there. Go to the other side. <laughs> okay. That was a bit of a wonky. Oh, what is happening here? Oh my lord, this, the, the fear from, I would honestly argue both of them in this moment, but definitely the buzz. So like, you get here, you have smash, okay. Like, you're, you're worried about the shadow ball, right? So I get you want to block it, maybe cover him coming in. I don't blame you there. Good spot dodge. You botch the jab, right? Because you go in and do nothing. I like the throw. And then here, you run away. And then you run away again. And then your purple die, you don't even realize it. And you dash attack. And then he forward airs you. That was such a, like... That was probably a, it's happening so fast a moment that the spaghetti kind of just like happens and you're not recognizing it. But watching it back, it's like, damn, you just botched like four things and you never even noticed when you were doing it, I imagine. Or it was just like a series of like, okay, this will work now and it didn't work. So I, I'm not even going to be hard on you. That was probably just, you kept thinking it would work and it didn't. Um, But just, uh, I mix it up a bit better? Like, your purple dies here, and that's really unfortunate. I think the dash attack after the pluck was where it messed up. Like, yeah, you're in this little weird scuffle. You pluck, pluck aerial, right? Or pluck side B. Pluck purple, just jump short up side B. Instead, you get dash attack fared. Or you get fared on your dash attack, and you die. So I think you should have used the purple. Okay, waiting. Good. That last damage. Oh, that was a terrible air dodge. What the fuck was that? So, what is this song? I need something to get me excited. Okay. That tipper down tilt was really nice. How do you get that? He just caught the buzz running. He said, hey, fly into this down tilt real quick. Now you're on the platform. Miss tech, Nair. Okay, I don't blame him for down and in there. Dodge the down smash, and that's really the important thing. I think the buzz would really um, benefit from down smashing at the ledge. I think that's something he needs to explore a bit more. Because it, it's, it's just fantastic. Especially against teleport recoveries, right? Where there's no threat of, like, you getting hit by that, that move. Okay, good. Oh, mm, juicy percent. It's been uncomfortable there. I think he waited a little bit too long on swinging. I don't like that. So, like, he plucked, and I was like, okay. And then he just kind of, like, jumps. It's like, what are you doing? You have to fight him. You have to attack. You have to do something. You have to create some form of pressure. Because, you know, Mewtwo's a fast character, so he ends up just running in there, dash grabbing. I think an attack would have been fine. Down throw, forward smash, forward air, or something. Just to create some form of pressure. But he's keeping it relatively even. He got a really good sequence earlier, and that's the important thing. Gets the back air. Mewtwo, heavier than I remember. So, you see, Mewtwo likes to go for these. Uh, he likes to use his floatiness to be able to cover back to ledge and then get an aerial up there. You saw I tried to for the back air. He made forward air up, up, or sorry, up air into the, through the stage and stuff like that. But, you know, the buzz is respecting that and then letting him come back for free. And that's a time where you really need to be trying to intercept him. Maybe shield it, maybe dodge the initial hit and then go punish him. But I think it's just a little, little too much. But you end up getting a grab. You kind of let him give it to you. He, he uh, teleports in because you scared him, and that was really good. But on average, I think you're letting him come back a little too much. Uh, and just because you're scared to get... Oh, Jesus. Were you just on ledge too long? We got it in hand. One sec. Oh, brother, he literally caught you. What is that? One, two, three. Three frames after your invincibility wore off. Remember, when you have a higher percent, you have less ledge invincibility. Call the bus slip in with 120%. You're not as invincible. Catch this down air. Solid play by Wadi. Uh, the bus just had a miscalculation on his part. Thought he'd be safer longer.
Uh, I don't blame the bus for going for that, because I probably would have assumed this would have worked well. Like, you, I thought he would have dodged it, but he ends up getting hit along with everything else in his fucking lineup. Then he catches up with an up air there. A bit awkward. But he's not out of this yet. In fact, he's rather healthy. I mean, it's, it's, it's even percent, and he's got a purple and a white out there. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. He runs and he shields the down tilt. I'm going to pull up some B2 frame data real quick. I think his down tilt is pretty safe. I don't know how safe, though. So we're going to find out. Another nerf turf from Smash 4. Oof. Down tilt up close, I believe, is minus 11. Right? So he could have forward aired it. He, did he try to air it? Yeah, he just reacts super slow. Um, grab could have been a viable option. That could have been another one of those moments where Mewtwo attacks up close to something that's not traditionally safe. Uh, and he opts to grab instead because he's not a frame to masher like some of those other characters, i.e. Mario with a frame 5 jab. It's not that fast, right? So I might have opted to do that instead. And I think a grab would have worked here um, just because... Uh, the buzz was a little bit slow on that, but I, it, the neutral air should have worked in theory or forward air. Up smash, funny enough, isn't fast enough. Uh, given it being point blank range, it would have been minus 11. It would have been framed too slow. And we got the shield out. Yo, thanks for the three month resub, Professor MP. One step closer to entering the Myron zone. Yeah, yeah, you do want to enter it uh, voluntarily as an Olimar. You don't want to enter it as someone else. But uh, unfortunate neutral air on his part, he ends up getting neutral aired on his own out. And then Wadi tries to come at him, but he hits him with a down air. Get himself back into this. Go for the down air again to Buzz. You have down tilt. You have a uh, uh, fucking down smash. Hell, I even saw you try to ledge trump Yanni earlier. Ledge trump that motherfucker. Look, you ledge trump that? That ass? 81? Purple back air stock gone. That's what's happening to Mewtwo. But instead, you try to time it with downer. You're essentially reacting a little too late because by the time he's teleported, you're already too slow. You haven't acted yet. A downer is a little hard to space like that. It takes a long time. Uh, you ended up just missing it when you could have done something else that probably would have been a bit more effective. When you don't even name an Olimar. Oh, true, true. I don't know if you want to go in the Olimar, in the Myron Tone if you're not Olimar, though. It's just like, that's a dangerous place to be. What's up, Syrup? This is the buzz of the game to lose. He's got the girls. Last is don't throw it, don't throw it, don't. The buzz has fallen prey to a phenomenon which I have found myself in, and I know plenty of other old miners have out there where your opponent's off stage. They're vulnerable. Um, you have two purples and you think, ah, oh, I'll just throw one and they'll die. Um, let's let's Take a moment to identify where Wadi was. So he gets forward aired. Wadi is... He, he just double jumps side beat. Wadi is up here. Monique is down here. There's no world where that hits him. And the problem with that is... Sure, if it hits and he kills Wadi, fantastic. You win the game. If you miss, you've given away one of your big pressure tools. And now you are essentially back to half of that power. And now you cannot zone as efficiently. And never mind... Wadi gives it up, says, you know what? That purple should have hit me. Have your fucking game to buzz. Good job. Fuck me for trying to critique that. What a shambolic set. <sighs> Don't do that with your purples unless you're absolutely comfortable. Sometimes better just to keep them, keep pressuring normally and keep your ability to pressure that well up. That's the moral of that story because your opponent will not always SD. See, gets the down tilt. That's what I like. A little early on that ends up getting caught with the invincibility from that dash attack. But that was a really good. That was a really good nair. Okay, so wait, let's talk about this. So he he misses there. Ends up getting popped up. Popped up. Tries the down air once. Right. Okay, that's your one downer you get. You fucked up. It didn't work. Stop downer. Stop attacking. Focus on getting out of disadvantage, right? So you get popped up here. Don't fall with fucking down air. 
falls down. Why do you even shielding it? Just get out of there. Double jump, air dodge, up B, whatever. Stop falling on him. You're falling into the Olimar vortex. You're you're creating it yourself. You're whipping that shit up like a fucking cotton candy machine. Reset. Gets called on his wing Pikmin dash. See, that was a fine downer. You're kind of threatening with it. You're going, hey, watch out for this. Hits him with the same thing I was saying earlier about Yanni. This was a good sequence by Debuzz. I like the patience. Plays it smart, right? He gets knocked off stage, ends up recovering, waits at the ledge, baits it out, says, hey, let me throw you off with the timing. You don't want to throw this. Ends up dodging it really good. Does the downer to threaten because he's drifting back. It's going to be really awkward to punish. Um, Wadi comes in. He does one-up smash, dodges it. Then he falls on him with a neutral air, clips him because Wadi drops shield. Right, think he can punish. It says, hey, I know you're going to air dodge in. You're fucking scared because you don't know what's coming after this nair. And the buzz is like, there's no combo. But he doesn't want to go off stage with the air dodge. So he goes in, like I was saying earlier. This time, though, he catches up with an up smash. Perfect punish there. And then he goes to the ledge. And honestly, I'm fine with that, right? He lost the first game because he fucked around on stage too much of the purple. Sure, one purple got reflected there, but he's back on stage and he has a purple. If he plays this right, he can create some serious pressure and punish him. And you see he tries it there. Uh, grab doesn't confirm. A little unfortunate. Uh, he might, it might not have worked just due to the percent being so low. Uh, he might have needed a little bit more or he might have needed to space the back air a little bit closer to the ground potentially. But either way, he ends up making it, uh, getting the back air and making it back to the ground. And now he's getting that percent. And he's playing the stock very well. Going back to that kind of mid-range zoning, getting his percent. The goal of this point at this point at the moment was to just get that extra credit. He ended up getting grabbed, but he's got 60%, and that's a little bit of a lead to work with any of the purple coming up. And that's the important thing. So now he can start getting right back to that kind of shield pressure that he wants. Mewtwo is essentially a kill percent to certain setups um, or certain hits, and if not to all of them, he will be soon. I like that down throw. The buzz. I know you down through him, knowing he would land on that platform. I, you could have tech chased, and you squandered it by plucking a white. <laughs> tech chase that motherfucker. That's the power of stages like PS2, Battlefield, and Small Battlefield. You down throw at high mid percents, in the middle of the stage or near or toward the platform. They di wrong. You put them in a guaranteed check, tech chase situation. You squandered it. How many times do you got to get punished on your wing pick and dash fade before you stop doing them? I don't know if you're ever going to watch this or if you're even watching it now, but stop. Options are best used as mix-ups, not consistently. I actually want to see something about me too, Nair. Okay, it's pretty safe. <laughs> I would up air there too, so I don't blame him. Good up air on the air dodge. Let's talk about that. That I feel like he could have got a kill there. I probably would have down smashed uh, when I landed there to try and catch him, maybe even charge it a little bit. But he ends up hitting a nair, and then I guess he read a jump, but uh, he ends up air dodging away. Smart. I don't blame him for going for that either. A little bit of spaghetti. I think he had to play a little bit better, um, or at least follow up off the nair better. But he's still winning, so it should be fine, unless he air dodges in like that. Um, I think the buzz would also benefit from actually shielding after some of those back airs as well, too, right? So let's look at that. So he ends up back airing him, I believe, behind Mewtwo, right? No, he's ahead, no, he's ahead of him, yeah. But even then, like, yeah, he's technically susceptible to a grab. But uh, if there's one thing I know, it's that players who you fight often who are good at the game, Wadi is good at the game, will kind of keep track of what you want to do after your defensive options as we tend to do to our opponents. So similar to up smash, spot dodge, back air spot dodge is a very potent option. And sometimes it's better just to shield, let him with punish, and then kill him. But he ends up getting clipped on the spot dodge, and now he's off stage, and now he gets down throw fared, and now he... <sighs> okay, what the fuck was that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my frame by frame. I want to see something. How did the, did the Buzz DI that up? Is that what that like shockwave is looking like? Because it doesn't look like out. That does not look like out. 
Wait, is it out? No, that is out, right? Is it this? Is this the shockwave, or is this the shockwave? Because I'm surprised that that down throw connected like that, and he did not go very far. Either way, unfortunate by him. All from really squandering that prior advantage he had. See, now it's it's easy to want to rush in and get the kill, and he ends up landing the blue, so good on him. But sometimes you got to take it a little bit slower and just, like, not force that in. You let your opponent give you the opening. He... What the fuck was that? You had a perfect opening. Like you literally rolled, and you could have grabbed, or you could have down smashed. Or forward smashed. I don't like that grab there. Did you try to nair there? Uh, up air? Maybe a tech air? But uh, I think up air is the play there. But somehow he's winning, you know, so we can't complain about that. Or not somehow, but he is winning, and that's the important thing. It's just all about kind of playing to his strengths right now. Um, I actually liked if he would have... I think when he did that first, he should have... I think a spaced yellow forward smash would have been really powerful here um there's absolutely no way mewtwo punishes this he potentially even drops shield as he did here and then you see he reapplies shield f smash might have caught him had he messed up had he not done it right probably would have been able to reshield in time but once again mewtwo is not punishing but instead the buzz opts to uh back air nothing run away and then get dash attack because he plucks and now he's off stage and now he's in disadvantage and the forward airs have begun Oh my gosh, DeBuzz. I, I can only assume you were tired or something. The amount of, like, raw mistakes in these games. It's, it's like, gut-wrenching to watch. Like, you 100% you had him up smashed and dead. Like, and you just squandered it. And you're shaking your Waddy knows he was dead. The Buzz knows he was dead. You and I know he was dead. The buzz should absolutely not have lost this game. I know DeBuzz was pretty harsh on himself, saying he was a choke lord and all that. I don't think he's a choke lord. I think he might have been just running out of steam. Uh, I don't know how much he was going to the other characters. Deflation, thanks so much for the Twitch Prime sub, dude. Big thanks. Welcome to the last astronauts. Um... What was I saying? Uh, yeah, I, I know he said he was a choke lord. He's pretty hard on himself. I don't think that's the case. I think the buzz is pretty stoic normally. I don't know how much he was playing uh, Min Min or Rosa throughout this tournament or this bracket. I know he did play it some, though. But it is very taxing to stay on point all the time. This is top 16 bracket. I've probably been going for a bit. He's probably getting into it. And these are exhaustive sets, and that's just a mental stamina thing he needs to reinforce, whether it be uh, actually mental or a physical execution thing. Those things you practice, it's not you choking, I would imagine. Or if it is, it's something you can fix just the same. I like that. F smash down, throw fair. Nice 40. Run back, throw Pikmin. Ooh, even better. Get the forward smash. And now he's got a 60% lead. Once again, I think you squandered the tech chase here. Like, you had it. And then, like, when he when it landed up there, I would have probably gone for an up air. But instead, you opt to go, like, jump, turn around, like, fair. Just shirk with the up air into the platform. Even if he does get up attack, if you space it right, you're not getting caught. I, I'm i almost convinced all of my drop, or the buzz dropping shield on those nares. You had that back air, 100%, dude. Like, you dodged that, and that would have been a juicy lean fully into it back air. He's probably dead. But you stop. You see how he stops? He just fast falls right there and misses it. Hit some of the forward smash anyways. 
How do we check stat scores for players? I feel like the most haven't taken stats from top five in a while. Uh, PG stats, the website there should have head-to-heads with most top players, so that's what you're in, uh, talking about. If you look up, like, the buzz, then you can probably search individual players. Waited a little bit on that there. I think had he... Let me double check. So he did Nair into up tilt. And then DeBuzz waits and attempts to go for the up smash, if I recall. But the problem is, DeBuzz waited a long time. Uh, he essentially waited for the... I, I don't know if it was like a visual thing, but let's say uh, Mewtwo hit his Nair at the safest, minus 7. Um, up tilt's eight, uh, frame 8. Up smash is 12, that's 15 frames. He had an opening, but he was way too slow. He didn't start that up smash until uh, deep into the up tilt. So he ended up getting caught just a bit late on that. Would have worked just fine normally, though, uh, had he gone for that normal setup. It's similar to when, like, Roids will jab you and then jab again. There's that gap in between for you to be able to hit them with a forward air with an up smash, something else as well. It's back turn. What is he doing, Lynch? Tries to up smash. I like the Nair here. He gets grabbed. What did he charge after that? Is it just a landing lag from the Nair? Oh, he tries to run, and then he gets caught because Olimar's... Okay. That was a juicy back here. Hold up. Probably should have jumped instead of the fair swinging. That's my thought. Maybe jump, try and go high, and maybe fall out of the, out of the yellow down and it up B. Um, but Wadi just kind of outspaced him there. Caught him with a, a, a really good back here. <laughs> I like the thought to buzz with the patience, but you did that shit all wrong. Like, it should have been approach with non... Because, like, let's talk about what you had. You had... You get to the point where you have purple, white, red. It should have been cycle, cycle. Or do something and approach with non-purple into uh, into grab, like immediate dash grab, right? Because look at this. If he's tell if he's reflecting, you run him with a dash grab. After the first throw, not the hell, even the purple probably would have worked. Uh, you run him with a grab after the first throw instead of the second. You're grabbing him, but since you committed to two, you were stuck on that animation for additional time, and he was able to get away and catch you with his own tilt while you have a while you had a Pikmin latched on. I, I feel like that should have been a fair. I don't know why you neutral aired there. Your neutral airs have been a little weird, I'm not going to lie. Okay. I'm not complaining about that. Get down there. Oh my god. I would have thrown the purple here. Because my logic is like, yeah, I, a fair's cool, but purple side B when you're at the apex of the short hop is going to, or full hop, is going to cause some pressure a bit earlier, potentially reach you earlier. Uh, you're not going to have to worry about it missing, and instead he fares, he misses. Uh, F smash pullbacks and gets hit. I think purple side B would have worked here just fine, but I, I could be wrong. It might not have been perfect timing. He might have got intercepted, but I think it would have been better than the pair there. Uh, and if he shields the, the, the purple side B, then you what? You're falling past him. You could potentially fall with a forward air at that point with the yellow because you're getting closer. You could fall with a purple or a yellow up air, something like that. You could definitely mix it up. But you probably would have been fine there. But instead, you get forward smashed because uh, of the pullback. Oh, you shut fucked. Yeah. Yep. 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 Re grabbed. I know you want that grab. There you go. Clean. I love the patience there. Kind of tricking Wadi into committing him with a juicy pivot grab. Keeping the game equal. That was good. That was good. This... Oh, Jesus Christ, the buzz. Really? I. I Alright, so I'm going to give him benefit of the doubt. Because I have had this these exact scenarios where I go to up smash and sometimes it comes out of spot dodge. And I don't know why. Um, It could be maybe you're inputting wrong. Um, you can actually see, I don't, you guys can't see it just cause, uh, maybe, can I, can I zoom in? No. Um, the buzz literally, like his eyebrows raise when you, when he does it. 
Um, let me see if I can. Like his eyebrows raise slightly right there because he's like, why did that spot dodge? That was an up smash. And I know that exact feeling because I've had that shit fuck me up in bracket too. And he ended up getting punished for it there. Kind of big, to be honest. I think an up air would have been fine there. He ends up getting it. That's the tech chase I wanted to see to buzz. I think you're getting a little too greedy with these neutral layers, though. You're doing them at really weird times. Like, it's not a shield pressure tool. It is a shield poke option. Gets the double hit. Gets some juicy percent. Actually takes the lead here. But uh, let's see if it let's see if it can stay. Playing this right, like, that's what he should do. Take it slow. Oh, n oh, no. Oh, no. He gets caught with the down, the running down tilt. And then he hits the tech, but the nair pops him up. Single hit nair. And the up smash. That was just... He just got intercepted there. I mean, he could have not ran in, but that's a hard that's a hard sell. That was like tipper down tilt, single hit nair, tech chase, and up smash. I was just Waddy just absolutely thrashing him on the conversion. That was, that was amazing by Waddy's part. Um... Big answer to that is just short upside B. Um, that that's what I would I would say is your answer to that. Maybe you don't want to short up because you're worried about getting fared, but or maybe don't approach that much and commit to the dash. But that's that's really all it was, um, and that's why you ended up getting hit. It was unfortunate. Maybe di the down tilt a little differently, but like yeah, there's no way to know, you know. Fortunate set. I mean, it was a lot of like weird nares. So many botched punishes on DeBuzz's part. He could have had that game 100%. I I, I don't think he necessarily could have won that. It was just really awkward punish in, uh, punish windows on his part. Um, and then just uh, a lot of like errors on them. Like I said, I know he said he was a choke artist. I think he might have just been getting tired or kind of burnt out. It is very mentally taxing to play. And I doubt he knows every little detail about me too. I could be wrong. That was definitely a winnable set. All right, so I'm actually not going to watch the Minmin -min game because I don't care about Minmin. -min. But we do know he loses. Right, let's see the buzz versus him. Or Ulmer versus him. So I, I beat Cosmos at Riptide 3-1. When I played him, you know, I think it was almost always big stages. I think it was like Town, Town, PS2, PS2. Because I lost game one, and then I went back to Town, and then he went PS2 after I beat him, and then I beat him there, and then he went PS2, and I beat him there again. Um... And then he went primarily Pyra. Oh, no, no. He stayed primarily Mithra. But almost every single kill he got was his Pyra. Usually when it was a high percent or when it was an offstage. He did not play the character a lot at more mid-low percents. And I found that very f nice because Mithra is not an intimidating character to me. In fact, she's very tame. Like, yes, she has good combos, but I don't care if they do 40% and I don't die. Um, also, if you can learn to parry her shit, you can really open her up and punish her. Her recovery can be semi-susceptible, and she gets bodied by purples, as does, well, everyone. This this reminds me of the Wadi set. He starts out doing his pick management shit, and this was early in the bracket, so maybe he had had a moment where that got punished uh, compared to, like, Wadi. But he starts out doing it, and he's just in there like stop doing that also did he did he attack cancel his jump oh no he did he whistle i can't really see because the go Definitely looks like a whistle. Okay, that's a whistle. Okay. Um, and then he gets hit. And he gets combo with no lineup. Free 36%. Then he's spot dodging. So you gotta be careful when you're spot dodging against a character like Pyra. Um, because that multi hit on the neutral layer is so good at catching you. It has that landing hitbox generated frame one when it lands. And that's actually where your main punish window is. But what he opts to do instead is he spot dodges out of fear instead of recognizing, hey, 
if I shield here, there's no punish. They're falling with an attack, and there's a good chance I can potentially neutral them out of shield uh, if she lands me with the neutral layer. I think her... I'm going to look up her frame rate real quick. Her nair is not the safest. It is... It's minus 10. So that's actually nairable by Olimar if you time it perfectly. Um, but even then, spot out definitely not the answer. So right off the gate, Cosmos is on him. He's already taking almost 60% because he went for a really uh, risky... Uh, choice to manage his Pikmin and he got rushed down for it by one of the fast characters in the game and got hit. And that's on him. And then when he got back on stage, he picked the spot dodge instead of shielding and he got hit again. He got one Pikmin though. That's the important thing. I don't like that roll there. He lands again and he's already scared. He's so, like, you can tell he's not confident when he's landing. He's like, I have to get the fuck out of here. He lands and it's like, he, he, he literally tried to double roll there. He, he tried to, he rolled this way and then he tried to roll again the other way. Pluck a Pikmin, fight, shield. She's not killing you off shield. She's not killing you off a grab. And now he goes Pyrex is at 85, and now he's getting fucked up. He hasn't even touched this dude yet. Good. Gets a nice 65%. 70. Opening him up really well. Gets downered. Thank you, Slaney. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, Pyra players, they love to spam down air. It's, it's almost like a like a problem they do it so much so like be mindful when you're intercepting them up there it's possible nonetheless it <laughs> i literally beat cosmos three weeks before this it's very much doable um the buds just kept picking terrible option after terrible option uh but he jumps at him and he, he honestly waited a little bit on that up air like it, it wasn't even like an immediate rising up air. it was like watch like he jumps and then he's like oh yeah let me just fuck around oh yeah I'm like, he hasn't even started the up air yet. This is some, like, oh, there it, there it is, there it is. You know? So he just waited too long to start it, and he ended up getting slapped for it. It would have been immediate rising up air, probably would have intercepted. Falls with downer, so he's not confident with the Olimar anymore. I don't think he's, con I don't know about the confidence part. I think he's just playing like a fucking idiot. That was an accident for sure. I can't speak to his general confidence levels. I can just tell you if he's playing like an idiot or not. And he had a lot of good plays this tournament. That is, his Olimar is more than competent in plenty of ways. He might have the jitters or he whatever, and he might get tired. Character's hard to play, but he's got the know-how half the time. The other half, he's floundering around like a fish out of water. But he's got a lead now. This is fine. He shit the bed the entire first half of this, the first minute of this match, and somehow he's winning. Because Cosmos is just as much of a choke lord as him. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. A nice juicy lineup. I think he should have grabbed this um, when he's approaching like that. So, like, when Cosmos... All right, so he gets that, right? He throws the purple. So, this is good. He has a yellow, which means he's got that normal distance grab. Cosmos comes with an air. Grab that bitch. Grab that bitch. I guess he could jump away. You could also try to intercept with an aerial, but I like grab personally because he has the landing lag from that neutral. Well, you know, let's do some math. One, okay, so land, land, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It's a lot of frames to be grabbing. And you up the jump side, B? Grab. Commit to your punish. If you're playing Olimar scared, you're not, you shouldn't be playing him. Alright, I like that. Go for the jab lock. Doesn't hit it, so you go for a down throw. Try the fair, I don't blame you. It doesn't hit, it's not the end of the world. How do you go frame by frame? Uh, you hit the comma and period keys. But either way, he's still in the lead! Mithra is not a problem character. Maybe I'm not 100% sure. I like that forward air, intercepts him, gets the stock, and now he's going in. This is like prime. Your low percent can't kill you. He's zero. Mithra, double purple. I would not want to be Mithra in this scenario. Mithra cannot kill purples easily. 
That's fine. He gets hit. It doesn't matter. I don't like the whistle. I don't like the air dodge after this. He whistles the hit, and then he opts for an air dodge, and he just doesn't need to. He already whistled. Why not hit him? And now you're landing, putting yourself into a dash attack range. Fight that bitch. Commit to your whistle. The buzz. You gotta, you gotta have some, some fat fucking nuts to be playing Olimar like that. All right. You gotta get in there. Get, you gotta get angry, the buzz. If you wanna play scared, play someone else. Was that run up shield? Hit him? Grab something? I know that feeling. Sometimes you just slightly misspace it. He's just shielding because he's too scared. I, I don't know if that's an accident or not, but that's terrible. Like, there's definitely a time to shield. The times he's doing it is not when he should be doing it. Like, that's when you fucking shield, when they nair on you. Like, he shielded there, then they let go of it. Buzz, you're just, we're going to go far back. Let's talk about this. So, you get on stage. You try to jab. You end up getting hit. Okay. Oopsies. You're fucked up. You're on here. And then, instead of going high, high, you land back at the ledge, swing, re-corner yourself, get clipped. You're back into square one. You're getting hit again because you're swinging the moment you get off the ledge. This! Th run! You just made it back on stage. You just reversed the stage position. You were winning in the percent. Run! Pluck a Pikmin. They don't have a projectile. They don't have a meter they're going to build. Regain your footing and re-put yourself in a position of power. Instead, he swings, he gets snared, and he's back into fucking disadvantage. Oh, Jesus. You've fallen with downer so many times. Stop doing it. Yep, gets grabbed. Okay. If you play disadvantage like that, you 100% deserve to lose to any pirate myth on the planet. You constantly tried to brute force your way out. You had multiple openings where you landed and you could have recovered and you tried to intercept him there. You didn't go high when you could have to try and recover and fall with the downer. You landed back on stage reverse position. You didn't fucking do it. You ran and tried to swing back at him again instead of regaining your footing and forcing him to play your neutral. If you play Olimar with disadvantage like that, you should not win. That's not being a choke artist. That's not nothing. That's you playing bad. I've lost so many games that way. It's hard. It's hard. I get it. But you have to train yourself to catch that. Not to mention that your first stock was essentially given up by you getting shambled and you're lucky he has deed. You're a competent player, DeBuzz. Hold yourself accountable to your fuck-ups. When you, when you mistake like that, when you go over-aggressive, reset. You have to do that. If you can hold on to those stocks longer, if you can force resets, force more neutral interactions, and force them to play your game, your character's viability skyrockets. Because then you have more opportunities to outplay them, more opportunities to open them up, and your character, frankly, has more raw kill power. We both know you're capable of that. Your timing for when to shield and when to attack is like flip-flopped. You're attacking when you should shield, and you're shielding when you should attack. Smashville, eh, not, not huge on it. I'd prefer town, to be honest. I would have nared there um, to try and spot dodge. Just because, like, this fair is very much like, if it works, cool. If not, then you're going to get guaranteed. Whereas nair, you at least have the chance for it to shield poke, maybe drop shield early, whatever it is. So you follow the downer there, okay. You're back in disadvantage again. Let's talk about why you're disadvantage, right? So you get hit here, you get put into tech chase. You kinda sit in shield a long time until you finally try to drop and then you get jabbed, okay. That's a, that's a mistake, right? You just made a miscalculation. So you land here, and then I personally think you could have either rolled to the right or maybe even run 
just straight ran, right? And then been able to get away. But instead, you opt to retreat, go for a fair. You missed the fair, unfortunately. But not only that, you retreated to the ledge. So now you're in front of him. You have no stage position. And you're re-grabbed. And then you're thrown off stage again. Or you're thrown, sorry, in the air. And then you start to up air. And you, you get a down air. But it's not safe on hit at that percent. It's just how it is. You get down aired. And now you're back off stage. And what are you going to do here? See, that's what I'm talking about with the Nair, right? You approach to the Nair. They drop shield. It's shield pokes. Whatever it is, they get clipped. You hit them, and now you can reset. But instead, what do you do? You pluck, and then you fight. Run and pluck, bit. Run. Right. Get away from him. That shit's massive. That approach, that cut through the stage. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Pluck, pluck a fucking Pikmin. I like that. Space forward air, right? Making it awkward. Cosmos didn't know what to do. You got a good punish. And then you... Um, did you just dash grab? With a yellow at kill percent? Samuel, what are you doing? You deserve that. Don't fucking dash grab. You know it. You know it. I know it. It's risky. And the risk was not that that was not worth it. Space was forwarded better. Actually, it doesn't matter. Yeah, space was forwarded better. What the fuck? You can dodge that one hundred percent of your space properly. Stop fucking down airing. Yes, neutral air dodge. Whistle it if you have to. I don't care. I think he would benefit a lot from um. With, with the way what Cosmos is doing, where, like, watch how he drops down and he does an aerial. If the buzz runs up to the ledge, or even potentially right there in shields, he could probably catch an up smash off this rising aerial, and then Cosmos is dead. But instead, he opts to try and intercept it, dodges, then he gets hit, and it's just not worth it. Like, he's not mixing up a shield game a lot, or his ledge game a lot. He's instead running the ledge and trying to do something. If it doesn't work, he might go run away. But there's a lot of mix ups. You can run up the ledge, shield. If they get up or if they get up attack, you up smash them. You run up the ledge, turn around. If they roll, you can grab them depending on your lineup. There's a lot of different ways to mix that up, um, especially when you start beginning the reacting. But he's keeping his ledge trapping game very uh, this or that, and I think it's a little too static for him because it's not even working in these cases. Like, it's not even uh, suited to punish what Cosmos is doing. Like, you can definitely coerce him into doing things if you, like, you know, use your movement right. Did he ditch? Okay, I thought he just purple. You can definitely coerce him into doing things if you use your movement right, and then you can get a good punish off him. I don't like that purple side B. It seems he just can't get an opening. Like he, he's. He's doing these really predict. He's trying to get kills with short hop back airs, but like they're just so predictable in neutral like that. If your opponent's like dialed into them and they know, like that's free punishes. That's exactly what he does. He parries, he grabs. Like Cosmos is fine with chipping him down until he gets a kill randomly, like that, because he knows he's got such a wide percent lead and it just doesn't really matter. And the buzz chucks is blue. I don't really agree with that. Like you might as well keep one where if you grab him, he's guaranteed dead because at this percent, I don't think Updo's is gonna kill with no rage with a non with a non blue. It might. I don't know the percent off the top of my head for non purple blue kill percents. Um, and even like a purple back air F smash or a blue back air F, F smash whatever is gonna kill too. So you might as well keep it. Like yeah, you might want purples, but clearly those aren't gonna solve your problems right now because you have deeper problems with your disadvantage, how you're landing kills, how you're even pressing your advantage a lot. I think you could have up aired that. But he gets the kill, so it doesn't really matter. I think he should have, um, when he did here, I think he should have kept the yellow in front, or at least whistled it in front of again. And what he could have done is run off stage, 
dip a below ledge like he does here, throw the yellow, um, because of its natural higher arc, it's actually going to, even below the ledge here, it's going to rise above the stage and latch on, potentially hitting uh, Mithra right there, right? I guess she has a ability, so maybe not. But, like, covering something there, maybe making her hit something, and then going to ledge and trying to either nair through or do something with the purple. And just creating, like, more stuff for Cosmos to deal with. But I think he kind of, like, put the purple in front here, but he doesn't use it. He just gets hit. And then he ends up losing his purple because he has to whistle to the front again because it changed because he got hit. And just, like, it, it was a whole squandered opportunity there. The disadvantage is him getting fucking slapped up. Like, he's going for this jump. He's not delaying himself on the ledge at all. Like, what happened here? He got hit. And then what's he do? He just... Immediately picks jump. Immediately pick. Doesn't roll. Doesn't, doesn't regularly get up. Doesn't drop down up air. Just jumps. Gets hit. And then he whistles and he air dodges. And, oh, frame trap. <laughs> I would have down tilted after that. I think with the yellow forward air at that low percent, you probably want to go for down tilt. You're getting called so much. <laughs> like he's tickling Cosmos with like little hits, but then they're not doing shit because it's such it's like a weak Pikmin. It's like a tipper yellow forward air at like mad low percent. Like it just doesn't matter. Like he needs to get some chunk chunkiness to this hits. Use forward smash, tipper forward smash, do something. But, like, he's hitting, barely clipping, and then staying in, like, that mid-range, and Cosmos is zone-breaking with dash stack, or, like, a random aerial. That's what I'm talking about, where that move just intercepts so well. Buzz, I'm going to keep it absolutely 100 with you. You played this set, like, hot garbage. Um, I think over the three sets we watched, your Yanni set was definitely you at your best. I felt like you were a lot more comfortable in that. I didn't catch your Riptide set, but I assume it was much like mine, where you just got shambled by stupid shit for no reason. Um, or you just maybe overcommitted when you shouldn't. But in, in the in the Yanni set, I felt like you were much more composed, kind of keeping your game plan. Yeah, you fucked up some, but you were better there. Here, you just you're neutral and you're disadvantaged. Literally every aspect of this looked like extremely brutal for you. Like you didn't know what to do. Um, your advantage was man, you'd get openings here and there, and that was probably your best spot. Your disadvantage was not great. You kept falling into hits. You'd pick one defensive option that would work. You'd pick another, like the whistle into the air dodge, or you'd swing at the wrong time and you shouldn't have. You didn't utilize your third, you, you know, the up gets like a third jump. You didn't land on the platform that much. You didn't delay your ledge options. Uh, you didn't shield enough when you did finally get back on stage, or you'd get back on and then you'd throw your advantage, you'd throw your reset away and try and swing again. Uh, your, your neutral was kind of questionable too. He just kept getting it on you. Like, use those space forward smashes to zone him. Let him shield, shield his attack, shield his dash attack, shield his up smash, or shield his, uh, nair, whatever it is. Shield his ship, punish him. Um, have really good DI on those Mithra combos, mix in the whistle, and it makes it really hard for him to kill you to even get you in a bad spot. And you just hit harder than him. Every opening you get should be twice as much as his. Um, and then, funny enough, in your Wadi set, you're playing really good in some ways, and then you just, I don't know what... What happened? What came over you in that moment? Maybe you were tired. Maybe you had the jitters. Whatever it is. But you dropped the ball on that. You had multiple games where you had kills. And you just fucking flubbed them. Or you made some absurd tech errors. And it just cost you. Like, every set was uniquely different. Um, but this set, you you definitely looked the most out of your element. Uh, I don't know if you need to practice Pyramid for more or what. But this was not... This, this did not feel like it was great at all for you. And it's funny, because...